Pogues. It's me again, Christopher Tompkins. Thanks for uh, tuning in, listening to us here on the Social Marketing Academy. So yeah, so it's been a lot of interesting developments out there. Uh, obviously, we are in the midst of the coronavirus, so uh, a lot of things have been changing. And you know what? Uh, one of the things that uh, I've experienced, uh, you know, at, at my company, the Go Agency, our firm, our sales and marketing firm, is that we've gone a hundred percent remote. Um, but this is not something that's new to us. We've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, we rotate our schedules quite often, so people can work from home at different times and be in and out of the office, and it just keeps things lively and fresh. So I'm very well versed in the problems that arise when you're working remotely. And today what I want to do is I want to share with you some of my main, I'm going to give you five main points of how you can work remotely successfully, okay? And just because you're sitting at home, I mean, I know a lot of people right now are sitting at home, working from home, out of the blue. They're kind of thrown right into it. You know what I mean? You're, it's like you were in your office one minute and then everyone is going to be practicing social distancing. So we're working from home. Oh, but, oh, crap. School's not in. Okay, so the kids are here. Oh, hey, hubby and wife, you're here too. Oh, and and grandma's staying with us too. Okay, so we got a full house and then you have to do your nine to five on top of all that. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to give you some five tips that are going to make everything a little bit easier. First off, I just wanted to kind of uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, the Social Marketing Academy, we've been around for years now, and we've been sharing sales and marketing uh, tips and tactics over the years to our many, many, many listeners. If this is the first time that you've been tuning in, my goal here with the Social Marketing Academy is to share all of the knowledge that I have based off of over 11 years within the Go Agency and beyond in, in uh, the marketing space and things that I've seen with prospective clients, clients, uh, I have a huge, uh, huge network of peers in the and other agencies and PR, and we always share stories. and I, I feel like a lot of this, a lot of this information is useful for you guys out there, and you ladies out there that are, uh, you know, in the marketing space and just looking for ways to kind of up your game, in some sort of way. So this is what this is all going to be about. So check out um, our archive of shows. You can see, you can listen to them anywhere that you can get podcasts. I mean, we're on iTunes, Overcast, uh, Stitcher. I mean, you name it, we're there. So check us out and subscribe. We have lots of great episodes coming up. I'm really excited about so many of these. So just stay tuned. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, queries, or you just want to maybe throw out a show idea or some feedback, visit me online at our my agency's website, the Go Agency USA. In the top tab on the far right, you'll be able to see all of the social links. Click on any of them and send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Also, while you're there, uh, we have a if you want if you have a website and you'd like to see uh, how healthy it is right now, um, on the pop up we're offering a free website analysis just to help everybody during this time see where if they have some downtime they want to make they want to improve their website. We're gonna give you some really quick actionable tips on what you can do to increase your SEO and uh, conversion on your website. So that's all at thegoagencyusa.com. But let's go back to the topic of the hour. So, you know, with the coronavirus pandemic reaching like these new heights, um, social distancing is definitely something that is being uh, suggested to contain the spread, right? So if this is being suggested now, it it could become one of the new norms for the months ahead. No matter what your industry is, things are changing, right? So what this means for businesses is that employee travel into the office is probably going to be something of the past very soon. And I mean, obviously, we're we're pretty much seeing that really increase really fast um, across the board. Uh, but if you what, what's the, what happens if you've never worked from home? How can you successfully com- comply professionally with the social distancing without hurting your work output? And like I said this before, at the Go Agency, our employees um, are on a rotating schedule. So what it does is it allows them to work remotely on a regular basis. And it's a great way to motivate as well as mix things up and keep our approach fresh and the flow of ideas consistent. I always like this because I really do feel that everyone, it's, there's great value in being face to face as a team, but also there's great value being able to just 
as they say, stick to your knitting, just being in your own space, just creating and working through your projects on your own and just having that alone time to really, you know, work on projects. And then you might come up with new ideas that then when you're in the office again, we can sit down and we can brainstorm. I love that speed. Um, so we've been doing that. We've been doing that for a while. I mean, for, for us, it usually happens after three months, we'll go into that remote situation. Um, and then we switch, um, an employee to an in-office and remote schedule. So they have uh, two different schedules that they're working off of and that we empower employees and set them up for success. So what that means is that we have to understand what, the deal is with working from working from home, right? Over because over the past ten years, we've seen what works and what doesn't. Oh, baby, have we seen what works and what doesn't, right? And I I think the pitfalls that we've seen there there's trends, right? I've seen them. I've seen a few of these again and again and again. So in the times of social distancing uh, and working from home, um, my team kind of urged me to share the five point system that we do internally with everybody. And I thought like, yeah, you know what? That's a great idea for a podcast. I think that would be really in- informative for everybody uh, because we actually have a system that we put everybody through. So we kind of sit down and we discuss these five points because I really do feel that these are the things that we've seen miss that people miss all the time. So I'm going to share them with you. So let's get started. Okay. Point number one. Make sure you have the right tools. All right. Take a look around your office and your desk. And now I'm thinking this is your office at your company, not your home office, your office office. What items do you use every day? What is is on your desk that you use every single day? What items do you never need? I mean, this could be everything from obvious items like computer, keyboard, mouse, reference files, to items that you might forget. Mouse pad. Back support pillow, stress ball, books you refer to. If you want to ensure you're able to jump right in to at-home work, make sure that your home office has all the comforts of your actual office. Okay, so make a list. If you're not, scan, if you're not at your office right now and you're struggling to work at home, scan your office in your mind. Scan your, your your work office. Okay, what what's at my desk? What did I use every single day? What what is why am I getting stuck here? Why do I feel like I I don't have everything? Because it's unsettling, right? One of the things that I've learned, and this is this is something very, very different, but one of the things that um I've seen a lot in the uh assisted living industry, because we do a lot of healthcare and assisted living is obviously part of the of that system. In order for people to to it, moving someone into an assisted living facility is can be very heartbreaking for that individual and the family. But what makes it easier is if you can replicate all of the comforts at, of home into that assisted living facility. So when they move, they move in and their favorite chair is there. And next to their chair is their favorite, um, their favorite little side table that they put their coffee or tea on. And then their um, favorite blankets on their bed and so on and so forth. Or, and the pictures hung right above the TV, just like home. These are things that make, make you feel comforting and make you feel relaxed. During these times, this is really important. And I, I, I'm leading off with this because I always tell my employees, replicate your environment as much as possible. And obviously you can add in more comforting items or whatever you want to do, but make sure that all of the the basic needs are met from your office environment. So don't forget pads, pencils, pens, post-it notes, or any other things that you usually use. Uh, and also don't forget the physical client files if you need those or other impo- important fly- uh, files that you might need. Anything that's important and not available digitally should be taken with you when you move, when you make that transition to home. And uh, I really do feel that that is kind of your baseline comfort, okay? So now you have all the tools. So you have your computer set up, you have your mouse pad, you have your, I don't know, your desk tchotchkes that you, you like that makes you feel comforting. All of that stuff is meaningful, right? Because part of working from home is keeping you in the same mindset, okay? It's not, okay, I'm gonna work from the couch, We'll talk about it in a little bit because that drives me crazy. But let's go into point number two. 
make sure you have the right setting. Oh, hey, we're getting right into it now. Now, let's move over to your home office, okay? In the best case scenario, you're probably going to have a room that you can dedicate to your office, um, preferably with a door, right? I say preferably or ideally because not everybody has that luxury. Uh, so it's important if you need privacy. Odds are that you won't be the only one at home, right, with the social distancing stuff. I mean, like I said before, in the top of the show, talk to the kids are there, mom's there, um, your wife's there, your husband's there. I mean, there's, there's people in the house. So uh, you're probably not going to be alone. This Having this dedicated area is going to help you limit distractions and enable you to also have phone and video calls, um, which are going to be obviously increasing over this time without any sort of interruptions. You may also want to get a sign. This is a really hot tip and this really works. And it's so, it sounds so childish, but it really, really works. Um, get a sign or a symbol that you can put on a closed door when you're on something on a call or you're working on something that you cannot, maybe you're proofreading a really heavy legal document or you're running some really hardcore financial numbers or you're doing something that you really cannot be interrupted on. Putting that sign on the door and letting everybody know, don't come in if this is on the door, please, because this is when I, I can't be disturbed. It's going to really help limit distractions as well because um, it's creating a boundary for yourself. Because, you know, think about at work, if you were, if maybe some, like there's, everyone has different cues. Maybe um, I know if uh, one person in our office is on headphones, that they're really, and they're really intensely working on something. I know if somebody else is, has their head down and they're writing something down on a pad, they're really, really intensely doing something. Or if they're in a different space. So just remember those cues. Um, so while your home office doesn't need to be like dedicated to a full room, I mean, if you're really trapped for space, make sure that you're somewhere that keeps you out of the main traffic flow uh, and keeps distractions at a minimum. I would really, really say no, an absolute massive no to living room or dining room. Um, um, our kitchen as well. I mean, these are all main traffic areas. And if you're working on specific things that you have deadlines on, this is just going to make you stressed out and very, very unhappy. So find a space and create your own workspace and then have a meeting with your family and let them know that. Let them know. Just, hey guys, I have to work from home. I have a lot of projects that I do. So I'm going to use this space. And during this time, if you absolutely need me, um, this is how you can get, you can, you can communicate with me or you need, you, you need to have to manage these. And it sounds ridiculous, right? Because working from home is just like, yeah, I'll open my laptop and just like sit in the couch and just have a coffee. Uh, folks, as times are gone, you have a full house. What are you going to do? This is what you're going to do. You're going to communicate your needs with the people around you. And again, this is something that we've seen um, employees struggle with time and time again. And once they actually had the chat with the people that they were sharing their house with, whether it be roommates or family, they were able to vary or animals, <laughs> sit down, talk to your dog. Hey, don't climb onto my lap when I'm in the middle of a conference call. I, you know, these are the things you have to think about. And they really do work. Uh, I think this is going to help you stay focused as well. I mean, keywords of wisdom. This is where I was telling you before. Um, I always tell my staff, you should never work on the couch sitting with a laptop resting on your thighs. That is evil. Do not do that. Unless that's what you do at work. Do you, do you sit at work and just kind of work on your lap? And I mean, it's called laptop, so I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. No. You're going to sit at a desk. You're going to sit at a table. You're going to sit at something that mimics what, you, what your environment is like at your office. You know, like I said, make sure that it mirrors your office and the real world and your office at home mirror each other. So sit at a desk, make sure you have a desk and a chair and a, and a, just get that together. Because if you're working from, and this is another one too, if you're working from your bed or you're working, because sometimes your bedroom's the place, right? And you know, that's not ideal. Because um, the place that you associate with rest, then being associated with the place you have to be most productive, can be a juxtaposition that's very hard for many people to handle. 
I would say that my my top tip there is if that you have to do that because of a roommate situation, a family situation, or what have you, just make sure that you have regular breaks there you get out of the room because you don't want to be, you want to break that association as often as you can. Um, ideally, I would not set up in a bedroom, but never work on your bed. Never, 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 unless you're sick, unless you, you hurt your back, <laughs> something like that. It is absolutely the worst. It's demotivating. It's unfocusing. And what do you do when you lay in bed? When you go to bed, do you like go to bed and read for a while, play on your iPad, look at your phone? You're not answering emails and writing reports, are you? Are you um, working until the time you go to bed? I mean, I, I used to until I broke from that horrible cycle, but I'm guessing you're not. And if you're not, don't work in bed. Find a place where you can sit. It's it's important. I mean, I work from home quite often, and I always sit at my desk. I might move into um, if I'm just if I'm doing some training or something, I might do that. Sit on the couch with my laptop. That's fine, but. I would do that at the office too. I'd find a comfortable area where I can watch the training. So again, make sure that it mirrors it. All right, folks, we're going to recap the first two. Make sure you have the right tools and make sure you have the right setting. Now we're going to three. Make sure you have the right access. Oy vey, this is something that is always a pain if you're not ready for this. See, at the Go Agency, we're marketing and sales, like I told you, um, and we need to have login access to hundreds of different accounts, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different accounts and services. So multiple sites, multiples on multiples. So my guess is that you probably do as well. You know, I'm sure you don't, don't have as many as, like we're an agency, we handle like tons and tons of clients. But even for you, if you're dealing with your own, if you're dealing with your company as one client, I'm sure that there's tons of access codes and logins that you need. So... What you may not think about when you're scrambling to prepare uh, what you need to go home, work from home, you may you, you may have saved your passwords in your browser so that when you go to a particular site, you're already logged in. Well, that's not going to be the case at home, folks. So you're going to not have access. And then guess what? On top of that, you may not have access because you're now logged into those same sites from a different location. So then it's going to send a text or an email to the account owner of whatever service that you're trying to log into. You know, we've all run across that at some point. You know what I mean? No matter what it is, if it's a Netflix password or if it's a Google password. Well, that's going to happen. I mean, if you've never worked from home before and now you're trying to log into everything, yeah, you might want to get that list and try things out first. Um, I'd also like, I also like to have a printed list of passwords just in case um, you can't access one of the tools electronically that you've saved it on, um, or you can save it on your desktop. I mean, just having it is just really, it's just safety. I mean, obviously, please note that you should make sure you're truly careful with that precious information, uh, you know, and uh, also one thing, another thing, I just, I, I'm thinking of things as I'm going through this podcast with you here today. Oh my gosh, your Wi-Fi has to be good. If you went for the cheapy, 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 cheapy Wi-Fi, uh, guess what? You're getting what you pay for. So if you are dealing with tons of, if you have to go online for lots of different elements of what you're doing in terms of research, and there are lot, there's lots of images and there's lots of videos and that type of thing, a slow Wi-Fi is going to kill you. Also, it's going to kill you in terms of email communications and tons of other things as well. So make sure that you have an updated Wi-Fi. Also, if you have a, if you have a poor Wi-Fi signal and you're moving to home, perhaps talk to somebody at your company, the CEO or whoever your um, superior is, about um, increasing the speed if that is an issue, if that's affecting performance. And, and I'm sure that that would be not a massive problem for them. You know, they would rather have you um, running on all cylinders rather than foregoing an extra 70 bucks for an internet pack upgrade for you. So um, let's go to point number four. Make sure that you limit distractions. And we talked about that before with a sign on the door, right? But those are distractions that you can't handle. How about things that are in your control? Such as, are you watching Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus at work? Are you doing that during your regular day? Is that something that's part of your day? Just kind of kicking back and just watching an episode? And I mean, I, I know at the Go Agency, a lot of us will have that stuff running in the backgrounds as noise. We're not watching it just as noise, just because it's like a white noise after a while. But... If you're not doing that at your office, don't do it at home, okay? 
Are you listening to your music full blast at the office? Don't do it at home when you're working. I mean, you want to try to mimic the environment that you have at the office. Um, Another thing is, do you have... (laughs) Do you have a good view of the pool? I love that. Um, If you are in a house that has a really great view, um, it sounds like it's the perfect place for you to set your desk. But if your family is is playing outside or swimming in the pool, um, it's going to be a little distracting, right? Um, do Do you work with your dog on your lap? at the office yeah maybe not could be distracting so um just don't do things at home that you're you wouldn't do at work and again i'm not trying to be a killjoy here i'm not saying that yo you know uh, you know lock your dog out of your office or um ignore your kids i'm just saying don't put yourself at a disadvantage constantly because you are already at a disadvantage in many ways right If you have never worked at home before, this is a whole new world for you, right? So in this whole new world, you want to be as effective as possible because you don't want to be distracted by the nonsense. So cut down on your distractions. You have the power to do that. And you're not also the only person that's in this whole new environment. Your whole family that lives with you is. And everyone that lives with you is definitely in a different environment. So just consider those things and how you can kind of protect yourself and don't create a whole new way to work when you're at home it's not the way to start once you find out the way to do it definitely edit change make things better but you want to start off as close to your environment at work as possible now i'm not saying if you weren't allowed to play music but you would have always liked to have music and you put it through your headphones that you're playing it off your computer i don't think that's the end of the world I'm just saying, don't really juxtapose yourself in a whole new work environment where it's completely different because you're going to you're going to really struggle to get the same sort of results. And the last one I have is make sure you're working from you you are working from work, you're you're working on work but not on your home. Does that make sense? Okay, let me let me give you a little bit of something. And this is this is everyone falls into this. When you're at, when you're in, when you are in the office, you have a super specific routine, right? You get in, you power on your computer, you make yourself a cup of coffee, chat with some of your employees about maybe a project or what you did over the weekend or last night, and then strategize what your day is going to be like. So when you're working from home during this time, you should not start your day by having a conference call while making your breakfast and folding laundry, right? Um, just a big tip here. I can hear what you're doing on the other side of the phone. Okay. Um, this is something that a lot of people don't understand or, uh, I mean, how many times have you been on a conference call and it sounds like someone's, does that drive you crazy? It drives me absolutely crazy. And it also shows zero respect. It shows zero focus and it overall is just a very, very negative way of going about things. So don't do it. If you're not going to do it in the office, don't do it at home. Um, just don't alter your routine because if you keep, you want to keep to your normal schedule because it, re- the, it really helps you. It helps you acclimate to your surroundings. The beauty here is that you're going to have extra time in the morning, evening, and during your lunch hour. Let's just, let's just be honest, right? And then this is where you can be productive and start executing your work-life balance right grab a workout clean up the kitchen play with your pet play play a short game with your kids um just just make sure that you're still clocking in and clocking out when you're when you're when you're when you're having that lunch time that break time just make sure people know where you are and um i think that it's It's challenging because, you know, I'm getting so much more done around the house. You're going to have so much time to to work on the house. So just make sure that you understand that you're not having to do that drive, that commute 
you don't have to do that. Jump on the, you know, you're not going to have to get on the bus, get on the train, get in your car, drive and ride, whatever to get to the office and brave the elements. And then you have to get your clothes ironed because guess what? You can wear whatever you want when you're working from home pretty much. So use that time to do all of these extras. Use your lunch hour and throw a little laundry in that you'll get at the end of the day or to do the dishes or to check in with a friend or whatever you need to do. Start off your day with the workout. Energize yourself and then you can shower and guess what? You don't have to shower, get dressed, hurry up, jump on a train and get to work. You're there. That's where you can really be effective. Just don't do it throughout the day because if you sound distracted, it's affecting other people on the other end and it doesn't make you look very good. So, um, also, one thing I just mentioned there about dressing, um, I, I really think that at least if you're working um, five days a week and you're on video conferences, so obviously you understand the top half has to look the best, but if you are not and you're doing five days, at least dress up one or two days how you would normally going to work. And it sounds weird, but it really does help you stay connected to that other side of you so you don't get too casual you don't get too lax you don't lose touch with that other side of you and I think that it's really important especially if you're going to be working from home which looks like for an extended period it can be very tough so this is this is that's a really just an important extra aside I, I think if you follow these five points that I, I went through today as well as having a talk with your loved ones to create boundaries. Don't forget that. Um, you're going to be able to mirror your office success at home and you'll be able to continue to get your work done and practice social distancing at the same time. So everyone's a winner here. Uh, you know, I think my biggest, uh, my biggest overriding tip for everybody is kind of an amalgam of these five tips. What you need to do to be successful instantly is to carbon copy your office environment and duplicate it. And then once you go through two weeks of that routine, then you can start adding nuances of whatever you want. You can start doing other things and adding things that you weren't normally do at the office. But just be careful because if you go into the deep end immediately when you start working from home, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle and there's going to be, and I, like I said, there's already lots of added elements of struggle, right? You have the family and you have, where am I going to work? And, and, and the house is too crowded and I have to do all this extra stuff. And my husband's so loud and there's tons of things. So don't be your own worst problem. You know what I mean? Work for yourself, help yourself out, get yourself comfortable. And then you can start, you know, adding some extra little fun bits to, to your routine if you want to. But remember, as soon as you're done, and, this, and you have to go back to the office. All of that, all of this goes away with it. So don't get yourself into new routines that you're not going to be able to duplicate once you get back into the office. It goes both ways. And that's why I'm, I always, I'm, at the Go Agency, we really talk to our staff and try to talk them through all of this so that they can understand how to properly execute it versus, you know, winging it and seeing um, how everything falls together. So hey guys and gals out there, thanks for listening in today. Um, those are my top tips for working from home during this time. I hope that you're uh, you know acclimating great and uh, you're ha not having any issues. And if you had any issues, maybe try some of this stuff and see if it if it helps you out, get you get, gives you a better understanding of where you need to be. So you've been listening to the Social Marketing Academy. I'm Christopher Tompkins. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me or learn more about the show, obviously you can check out all of our archive shows. Uh, we have a huge, huge archive, tons of tons of great tips that are timeless and evergreen. And you can see them on iTunes, Overcast, tons of different sites, Stitcher, um, and Blog Talk Radio. There's there's lots of places you can listen. So just you know, just search for the Social Marketing Academy on Google, and you'll find all of our stuff. And if you want to go to the Go Agency USA. Com. Again, that's the goagencyusa.com. Across the right top, you'll see all of our social links. Click on one of those links and get in touch with me. Let me know what you think. How's it going? Let me know. Uh, my accounts are on there. And while you're there, sign up for um, our pop-up has a free website analysis. So if you're in uh, marketing your company or you're or a small business and you want to see how your website's performing in these times and how you can make things better, 
Just fill out that short pop-up and we'll send you an analysis in real time. So you can take a look and see what you can work on because everyone has a little bit extra time in the workday. So why not check that out and see how you can make your website better? All right, folks, um, that's it for me today. Uh, thanks again for listening in. Uh, I'll be back with more shows very, very soon. So thank you all for listening to the Social Marketing Academy and I'll check you all out very, very soon.